Hello, hello. Welcome back to Dragon Con Filth Music Track Online. This morning, we, or this afternoon, wherever you are, uh, we'll be starting off with a panel about starting a band online with Madison Matricula Roberts, Lee Tyberg, and Chuck Parker. Hello. Hi. Hi. Well, everybody, so we're going to take a minute to uh, introduce ourselves briefly, and then we're going to start about, uh, start about, start about the talk for the online. We're going to talk about starting a band online. So I am Madison Matricula Roberts. I am a solo musician, and I am also part of a, uh, a duo and lots of other collaborations over the years, um, most of which I've done online. Um, and we'll we'll talk uh, a little bit um, about our story with uh, with Lee as well. But um, again, I'm Madison Matricula Roberts. My music's on uh, Spotify, uh, Bandcamp. You can just search for Matricula, um, like like the metric system, but little. Mm -hmm. So, and then um, <laughs> we'll go to Chuck, and then to Lee. So, Chuck. All right. Hi, my name's Chuck Parker. Uh, in the Filk world, I guess people know me as the bassist from the Blubbering Humdingers, big wizard rock band. We have a lot of fun, and I also do solo stuff here and there, and Play with whoever asks me but my stuff is available um, humdinger stuff and my stuff is available on spotify all the all the places like that so my name is lee tyberg i uh am the other half of the salacious mm -hmm. crumbles uh you can find our stuff on bandcamp and a little bit on spotify but more to come mm -hmm. Yeah, so talking about that, so why don't we talk a little bit about how the how we've kind of gotten involved in collaborating online. I know for me, um, Chuck was one of the first people I did collaborate with online for a charity album with Twitch. Uh, he played bass for me on a track, and it was the kind of thing, like, I recorded my guitar and my vocals, and I sent him the thing, and he sent me back the bass. I'm like, okay, now i got to figure out how to make the make the bass. <laughs> Um, oh, uh, yeah, Cacophony, hey, my, uh, my bird Icarus is also with us on the panel. He often sings along with me. Uh, and then with Lee, actually, we've only met in person once. One time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but we've put out an EP now, and uh, mm -hmm. it's it's been a really interesting process. So we just kind of hit it off through through fanfic. But um, if you want to talk about um, maybe how uh, getting involved with, like, doing the music online and realizing that it's feasible <laughs> with bandmates that don't live near you. I know um, mm -hmm. Chuck and Lee both have – and me. It's all kind of <laughs> – I mean, I I've been – sort of low-key playing music you know by myself mostly for a, a while and like you know you you sort of i i feel like we just kind of fell into it if i'm honest like like i wrote song lyrics for a fanfic uh back in may and you know matricula matricula was always like we had been chatting about fanfic and all sorts of other stuff and She'd always sort of said, you know, if you want to like write lyrics or anything, like we could like let me know, we could figure something out. And I sort of was like, yeah, all right, you know, whatevs. But then I actually like sat down and wrote lyrics and I was like, you know, maybe there's something here. So I sent them to her and she was like, no, no, this is good. We could do something with this. <laughs> so, um, so it just kind of roller coastered from there, really. Like the encouragement really got me going to do more and more and more <laughs> so That's this community isn't it i mean i wandered into a filk circle 10 years ago just to listen to music i've been playing guitar forever but mm -hmm. you know, and then before you know it i got into oh hey you play bass okay sure you're in the band now and <laughs> for the last seven years i've been we've been playing all over the place with them and the humdingers live in north carolina i live in richmond virginia mm -hmm. so a lot of the a lot of the collaboration we do for the recordings i have every single piece of my every single piece that i played except for one on the last humdinger's record i did sit here in my little space and just sent the stuff down so well that's interesting for you chuck because you were playing um live with people before you were collaborating online yeah. right yep yeah i've been you know i tried it in my 20s a little bit and then got off and then in my 40s i get a lot more gigs <laughs> <laughs> so, it, I mean, I go get a attitude. Yeah, I I used to sit in with with friends' bands because I'm also a trumpet player. Mm -hmm. So like, if somebody needed like a horn section or whatever, you know, I would jump in, um, and it got me some you know interesting gigs to play occasionally. But like, this is the first like real. It feels like more like in real life, even though everything is mm -hmm. digital and online. <laughs> oh yeah. But uh, 
yeah, but it's been it's been a great it's been a great collaboration. It's been really, really fun. And it's fun. surprisingly, <laughs> surprisingly like low stress. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we it it's always a matter of like, you know, like, oh, do you have time to do this now? Like, let's schedule it. And there's never any like we do have deadlines, but like there's never any like there's never anybody being mean about deadlines. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's always good. <laughs> well, that's a good jumping off point, uh, kind of going through uh, some of the stuff. So there are some like, let's, we'll go and do the dry stuff here at the top mm-hmm. and then we'll get into like more of the fun stuff, like the tools we use and st- things. But I think one of the important things talking about what Lee was saying about um, it not being as stressful and trying to manage it is talking about expectations up front with people that you're collaborating with. Um, whether that's a conversation in writing or um, just an email chain or just a conversation that you have together. I think that it's really, really important for anybody involved in a project to say, this is the level of involvement I'm able to have. Um, what do you want? And then finding a middle ground there. Um, same things. And, and we can talk some about like uh, setting those expectations. And then also um, when you're collaborating with somebody, even if you're not doing like formal contracts, um, having conversations about how to split intellectual property Mm -hmm. Um, if certain songs are more like, um, dear to you than others, so you don't want, um, like they're, you know what I mean? Like, like in general, it's like, we, we, like, I feel comfortable playing most of the crumble songs on my solo streams and I I promote the crumbles in that, but there's a few that it's like, those are definitely like Lee songs, Mm -hmm. right? Um, not in a bad way, but like, um, talking about how to handle intellectual property, not just if the band splits, but, um, kind of made that's part of expectation same things with um time and also money um for example the crumbles we're putting our stuff up for uh pay what you want but we're still paying to do things like distribution on spotify so um just having like a, at least something like an email chain of like hey okay so any profits we make are going <laughs> to go toward paying for the distribution and then if we somehow make it past that then we'll split whatever it is um or it'll go toward like site hosting fees or something like mm-hmm. that. Like it's kind of, and we haven't formed like a formal LLC, which some bands do. I know the Maidens have done that for, for this purpose. It just depends on um, kind of what you want. But I think those are really important conversations to have. So I don't know if, if Chuck yeah. or Lee, if you have thoughts about setting expectations or just um, kind of like the businessy parts of yeah. collaborating online. No, I said I can jump, or, or Lee wants to go first. Like I said, I'll, I'll jump in. Like I said, I'm honestly with the, with the Humdingers, even though I've got a couple of songwriting credits now and everything, it's just, I'm, I'm kind of work for hire. It's their, it's their project. You know, one of the, I sold Liam a bass last year. I'm, my time is limited, but. <laughs> the family no, band, the family band. Yeah, but no, it's, it, you know, it's always, you know, setting <clears throat> expectations and, you know, I, in terms of, yeah, it, it, that with any project whether it's music or whatever, or if you're in, you know, this is the kind of thing, same thing you got to do anytime, whether you're in person or not. It's, you know, just be clear about what everybody's role is, what everybody, where things are going to go. Yeah. And I think it's also important to kind of have reasonable expectations, you know, of, of other people, but also of how well your music might do. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, when we put up the EP, I don't think either of us thought we were going to make any money off of it. (laughs) We we put it up for pay what you want. So it was just like, Oh, everybody's just going to download it. And we, we want people to listen. And also like in these trying times, Mm -hmm. it's, it, it was really important. We had the conversation of it's really important for us to put out something that's fun, that makes people happy because, because of everything that's going on because of, the pandemic yeah. because of mm. the world right now right no, so like a lot of folks have done that yeah. yeah and but and anything that comes in that's you know monetary is just like a bonus thing and it's just yeah. like and then you know like madison said like we have you know an agreement on what happens to that money which is totally fine like you know so i yeah i think it's managing expectations is a big deal and i think doing it up front yeah. You can always change it. You can change yeah. it. Like it's not set right. in stone, but I think having a conversation up front, mm-hmm. like, okay, if this happens, then we'll do this. It gives you a yeah. starting point. Cause then exactly. if something happens and you're like, Oh, this isn't actually working, reevaluate it. But I think it's really good to have like that framework up front so that you don't have to worry about it. If it comes up, mm-hmm. like you've already got it. So mm-hmm. it takes, 
I think it took a lot of pressure off because like before we even really got started, like because we were putting it on Bandcamp, so it's like there is it is attached to like you know a, a PayPal and a bank account and stuff, and it's like okay, so this is the process, and then we can always change it, but it took a lot of pressure off because now we don't have to like really think about that. <laughs> right, and and it's it's a very clear way of working and so nobody has anything weird in the back of their head of just like well what happens blah 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 we know what happens we already talked about it and if an issue pops up we can always talk about it again yeah and like i said for songs that we write together a lot of times i ask it's like okay is it okay if i cover this one or some that are like because there are definitely Mm -hmm. some songs like uh that i've been that i've produced for lee but they're lee's songs they're not necessarily a crumbles project and it's like, um, and that's all fine too. And I know uh, Chuck has collaborated on stuff with me. And it's, I think a lot of us, we're not really making money off of this. It's mm-hmm. about having people hear our music and collaborating. Yeah. And we yeah. might, um, or we might not. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't know. It's hard yep. to tell. <laughs> so um, I thought maybe um, just we'll kind of move along uh, to talking about, I think this is the cool part, some of the technical stuff, like the mm-hmm. tools that we use to do all of this, uh, all of this work online. So um, I know that uh, Chuck, you mentioned like how um, how do you uh, work it with the humdingers? Like you get you get the tracks and you're recording in your little studio and. Yep. Yeah. They'll they'll yeah. You know, Lart usually you know we'll use like, in this you know Dropbox or something mm-hmm. like that or Google Drive whatever that just because the files are huge, but they'll send me MP3s or whatever and Scott's usually the one who pulls it together on his end so I'll record him you know just the raw audio files I'll give him a couple of takes if you want, you know, bass, whatever, whatever he wants. And I'll send them, send them to him and he does the production. And we did the same kind of thing when I, when I did mine. I, oh, you're solo. Yeah. Re- you did solo. Record yeah. Too. yeah. Most of that's most of that stuff I did here, but you know, and I, I had DJ sit in on one song and, but again, he didn't have the gear yet. So I actually took mm-hmm. it to him, but yeah, now I think with this next, this project, again, DJ and I working on a project that's in the early stages, mm-hmm. it's going to be, I imagine a lot of it's going to be remote. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, let's talk more about gear. Uh, So you mentioned, so some of the programs that I know that uh, we use heavily and uh, I know Lee, you've been setting up your gear. So I think you probably have some good perspective on this too, but we use Dropbox really heavily. Mm -hmm. Um, There's an app called Marco Polo. That's like an asynchronous video chat. We actually use that extremely heavily. Yeah. We use that a ton. Um, it's just, it's a lightweight thing. So it's like a chat messenger, except it's little Mm -hmm. video clips. So it's really easy to send little clips of like, oh, hey, how about this thing? Like, that's how we write a lot of our songs. Mm -hmm. Uh, like Lee, uh, Lee's the primary songwriter, um, doing most of the lyrics and uh, a lot of the melody work too, but it's like, I'm doing the guitar arrangements. And it's like, okay, how, maybe like this kind of feel. And it's like, no, 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 that's too, too sweet. Do something more. It's like, what about this? It's so dark, you know? But it makes <laughs> no. it really easy um, because it's I, asynchronous it, so that yeah. you can leave a message and you don't have to like be on a live face chat, which has been right. super convenient because, you know, work days and, you know, life. Right, I'll, I'll be working and then like, I'll get like a polo from Madison and I'll be able to respond you know, when I can, which has been really good. And again, it's like another thing that sort of takes the pressure off. Mm -hmm. I can see that as a real benefit. I did not know about the Marco Polo. I know, no, but going back, I, Kirsten and I from the, from the Humdingers and we were working, oh, what the, the little Lego Loki song they played last night. We were trying to find the tone for that. I was constantly, we were emailing MP3s back and forth. A quick little video might've helped there. So. Yeah, and we've done a little bit of um, like live video chat, but the problem with live video chat is that um, there's latency. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that um, there are ways to compensate for that. But um, in general, it's hard to play live with somebody else. So doing short video clips back and forth has been really helpful. Um, I record in Reaper um, and I still use Audacity some, but um, any kind of DAW, as long as you can, like, you know, export nice wave files. Exactly. Yeah. They, they say, you know, I, I have Reaper on my machine. I've never really used it. I use something called Waveform now, which mm-hmm. is, it, it came with my audio interface and I've been working with that. What they say is, you know, your digital audio workstation, that's what DAW means if you're not familiar. Oh, yeah. Thank you for. Yep. Yep. That's, you know, is, you know, use whatever you're comfortable with. Just learn how to use it. You know, it's, they're, None of them really work together, but the file formats you kick yeah. back and forth do. So just as long as you know what you're doing with your piece of software, that's that's what matters. I'm still sort of a beginner in all of it. So I, I mostly use Audacity because it's very straightforward. And it's a program 
it's a program that I've been using for years for other things. Yeah. So, um, but I, I did the other day, I figured out some Reaper things and I was <laughs> very proud of myself. Yeah. Now, um, Audacity yeah. is great for a lot of things. I mean, I still use it if I've I needed, you know, my, I said my, my wife and daughters are Irish dancers. So they're always looking for beats per minute on songs. I will take, uh, no, it's nothing to throw an MP3 into Audacity and change the timing. And that's, I do that all the time. <laughs> It's amazing. Audacity is a great, uh, it's a digital audio workstation. It's yep. a free program. Yep. Um, it's a great one to start on if you want to play with it. Um, so I think let's also have a conversation about some of the like physical gear mm -hmm. um, as far as um, we're not going to get into like the whole home studio setup. Yeah. But um, my biggest thing is it's great. You can always have better gear, but mm. I think it's more important. Uh, like Chuck was saying, take the tools that you have yep. and use them. So mm -hmm. use whatever you have. Like, frankly, a lot of, and we'll get into more of what we use, but, like, frankly, a lot of um, the microphones on phones are not garbage. Um, mm -hmm. And there are ways to record uh, guitars into them. Yeah. You can, um, you know, like, like work with what you have. Like, you can set a mic up in a, a demo. When I was really first getting started, I took my iPhone and put it on the, the sink, and I sat on top of the toilet and played the song in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the recording. And actually, it was pretty mm -hmm. clean and good. And mm -hmm. then you can use pre-programs like Audacity to help clean up background noise and, um, you know, raise levels and normalize them. And it's, mm -hmm. I, I think it's more important to make the stuff than wait until you have the perfect thing. And, yeah, and yeah Reaper is a great program, but it can be a little non-intuitive, uh, mm -hmm. like Lee's experienced. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, that was like two <laughs> hours of my life that I'll never get back. Mm -hmm. I'm fighting with Reaper. It's fine though. It was a good learning experience, yeah. but like, oh my. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I love using like, yeah. I love using like the phone recorder, um, for like six a.m. Like all of a sudden, I've got like a melody thing, oh, yeah, no, and I just I reach that. out, yeah, and just mm. grab the phone and record something. And like it, like two hours later, when I'm actually awake, I don't remember, but it's on there, and it's yep, so exactly. great. <laughs> Didn't you lost... record the boot stomps yep. uh, for Moonchild with your phone? Yep. I did. Uh, I I stomped my boots, and I had my my wonderful best friend slash roommate <laughs> hold the phone, like sit on the floor and hold the phone while I did it, because God forbid I stomp on the phone. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, and they turned out really great. And I also uh, recorded the bathtub sound too on the phone. Oh yeah, the, t the literal <laughs> tub thumping. I thumped the tub. I did yes, indeed. Go. So yeah. we've been doing, like, like I said, find found sounds, find your like make yeah. percussion hand claps, um, but record, <sighs> make the make the thing and make it together. Yeah. Um, but uh, Chuck, I've been interrupting you. What would you, would no, you like gonna, to no. add? No, that's fine. Yeah, no, I mean it's just you know the learning things and like you said, use the stuff you have and you know yeah you may not have the greatest mic and it doesn't record <clears throat> flawlessly but it has this neat sound to it anyway just lean into it that's what i did as you know as you get stuff yeah your, your stuff's not the greatest but everything has its you know sound is sound you can make anything sound cool yeah make it sound fun make it sound like yep. you like with what you have so like i just want to really impart like we might talk about some more technical stuff but use what you have and yep. do it with friends because i think that's so important right now Mm -hmm. And always, yeah. but like, don't let it stop you. Um, so a lot, so I have a, um, my setup is like, I, I have like a kind of a more studio setup, like I'm running into an interface and all this stuff. Yeah. And I think Chuck as well. Yeah, um, I've got the, actually, I got my box right here. This is, I'm, I'm plugged into one of these right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the, just the little two channel interface. It throws the, you know, the, you get, I, I recorded some stuff 10 years ago, back in straight into the sound card. Of a, of a machine and it was okay but you have the latency this takes care of that and that's you know you can plug your various cables into it it just usbs into your computer and mm -hmm. it's perfect and uh, it only it only costs 50 bucks you can get one for under 100, 100 bucks now yeah they add a lot of flexibility now uh lee yeah. is using um usb a usb mic that's i am awesome. i use a a i it was it was under 100 dollars, and it came with its own stand um, and it's my little blue USB mic. Uh, it's in the other room. I, I have a very small apartment. And so I actually wind up using my bedroom as like a recording room. No, um, use what you got. Yeah. You use what you got. And I started on like, a 
on like an office like headphone mic. Yeah. Like yeah. the first you made like it sound awesome. the yeah. like like Great Negotiator was recorded on that mic and Tatooine Lullaby for the most part. Mm-hmm. Like my parts on Tatooine Lullaby. And you we made it work, you know? Yeah. Like people pay money for people pay pay money to make their to you know to get that telephone sound now that people do. You know, they, <laughs> yeah. they record it record into three thousand dollar mics and use plugins to make it right. sound cut like the a cut the so um, a thing I use uh, and I used to, this used to be my primary mic. Okay. It's a snowball uh, oh, yeah. microphone snowball. It's like about fifty bucks. It's a USB mic. Um mm-hmm. it's kind of like the little sibling to the Yeti. Yeah. I also own a Yeti. And I'm telling you, for most purposes, I cannot tell a difference between the Snowball mm-hmm. and the Yeti. So yeah. if it, if cost is a thing, just get the Snowball. They're great. Yeah. Um, I used to use it um, to stream, uh, to live stream. Uh, I would put the Snowball on a mic stand. It screws. It has an adapter, so it fits any normal um, threaded mic stand. So you can change the stand if you want. And I put it, and I used the mic positioning, and that's how I recorded my voice and my guitar. Um, I didn't have a, it was all running into this microphone and not doing an interface or anything. So I had to, you know, like you old school, like you, you control your volume by mic yeah. positioning. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, you can do that. And it sounded great. A lot of people do that. Like, yeah. um, I, excuse me, I still have videos on YouTube of just this mic um, from live streams and they sound fine. And that was before I even knew about how to optimize things with free tools like Audacity. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I said, if you, if all you have is your phone, Make the recording on your phone, open it up in Audacity, see if you can, like, kind of, um, if you want to, like, um, mess with the sound a little bit, or, you yeah, know, you want to convert it to a nice WAV file, like, give mm-hmm. it a shot. Don't let it stop you, and then send it to a friend. Yeah, um, and they're all there's... Been, just start playing with it. There are so many tutorials out there online. So Absolutely. Also, yeah, if, you ha- if you're curious as to how to, how to do something on, in Audacity, jump into Google, boom, 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 boom. I've, I mean, I've always found because it's open mm-hmm. source. There's lots of tutorials. Yep. I have a uh, I have a really old Yamaha keyboard, and I really wanted to record that piano part, but I wanted to do it cleanly. And I tried all these different things. Hmm. I tried to do it through the mic. You know, I tried like just doing it on my phone. And at the end of the day, I was like, you know, well, Matricula was like, you know, if you get a MIDI cable hmm. and plug it in to your yeah. laptop you can record it straight in and that's what i wound up doing and like there's always a way and that cable was like ten dollars like yep. and it was so worth it to be able to get it done i mean it took me a million years to figure out how to really do it in reaper <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, me too, yeah. yeah yep. but um it was worth it to get the sound that i wanted like oh, yeah. and and it didn't break the bank you know and yeah. and I looked at a million tutorials for Reaper to figure out how to make it work. Like it's all out there. Yeah, the barriers for entry are gone now. You're, you know, most yeah. of us carry around great stuff in our pockets with the phone or our mm-hmm. laptop or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's my whole recording rig, a couple hundred bucks. You know, mm-hmm. that's about it. And you don't even need that. Like, um, and frankly, yeah, exactly. too, if you play guitar, um, they like you can get a. Um, quarter inch like a, an instrument cable that goes yep. to usb and it has a little mm-hmm. miniature sound card on it yep. and you can plug mm-hmm. it in and it thinks it's yep. just like any other usb microphone so like you can you don't even need an interface to like direct record um i like using the interface because i have a bunch of different instruments but that's exactly. like that's later down the line you know yeah exactly um, that's how i started with click tracks <laughs> oh click tracks that's something i gotta learn to do better but... i'm not very good i don't keep a very steady beat mm-hmm. um and I can't hear, I need to practice with, I've been trying to practice with metronome. So when you're working with people remotely, the mm-hmm. main thing is to make sure all of the tracks line up. Yep. <laughs> and um, oh, yeah. I have a hard time playing in time <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so trying to use the click tracks, it's not so much for the playing sometimes, it's it's to keep, when, it, when you get the It's the timing, tracks, it, yeah. It's a yeah, consistent frame of reference for everyone Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so it's like, you know, I have to click tracks, and then before I sing or something, I, I clap with it, and then before mm-hmm. I do a guitar, I do, it's like, it's redundancy, because I don't really know what I'm doing, and you don't have to know what you're doing, you just have to know how to, like, line them up, yep. <laughs> and that helps a lot, but so instead of a click, I just have a hard time, I'm practicing, but it's like, I have a hard time hearing, like, like don't, 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 don't. I, I can't hear that, so I actually use like a kick drum sound instead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or sometimes I've just gone to YouTube. Here's a good trick: um, on YouTube, if you if you look for um, drum 100 BPM shuffle, yep. mm-hmm. um, you can find somebody doing a drum loop for like six minutes, yep. 
yeah. of just like a shuffle or, or like just some kind of rock beat or something. And I've reported mm-hmm. to that. I don't use that in the I, final product because it's yeah. someone else's work. But to give yourself like if you're having a hard time, just just add like um, you can pipe in this like YouTube drum track and play along yeah. with it. And it's a lot I've, easier to hear. I've done that. Yeah. Just Yeah. There, there's stuff out there. People have free drum loops out there. You can download the MP3s. They offer up for free. Uh, freesounds.org is a yeah. great resource. Uh, that's how we, uh, the cityscape thing that we did recently, um, mm-hmm. we got a, um, it's licensed under creative commons. And, uh, we, we use that, uh, as part of our thing. Um, we recorded our own boot stomps for a song, but our mm-hmm. test boot stomps I got from freesounds.org. Um, and we're uploading some stuff to that too. It's just an awesome place to find weird mm-hmm. things. Like, yeah. um, I recorded, um, I got a contact mic and I recorded my tea kettle as the water boiled. That was really cool. <laughs> but, um, but, oh, there's so many people making free resources. Yep. Um, so if you don't have um, instruments or if, let's say you're just you sing and you don't have other instruments, there are tons of ways to find um, free loops for uh, for rhythms, for even guitar progressions. Yep. Um, but um, some of the things that I know Lee and I do, it's like um, she'll have like lyrics and like just and I'll think like, like we'll try like some weird progression. I don't know how you uh, you write, Chuck, because you've um, you mostly write. You're writing with DJ now, though, right? Or uh- uh, so so far we haven't really done that much writing together yet he mm-hmm. he goes so he's so fast he's extremely but, fast with yeah. he's like lee with lyrics like just really <laughs> yeah like, I, do, I, I do tend to oftentimes i do st- i do start with lyrics first that's just the mm-hmm. way it works for me but then i'll find it sometimes i'll just hear a riff and run with that but it's been but, different yeah. for me because i usually mm-hmm. write um kind of with the the music first and mm-hmm. then kind of fill in the lyrics as I go. And it's been fun working with Lee because we start with lyrics yeah. and then fill in um, like the music. Like, I don't know, if, Lee, do you want to tell the um, the Carbonite story? Oh, so, <laughs> so the this lyrics... Is good, this is a good songwriting trick. Yeah, actually. for the lyrics, the lyrics for Carbonite, what happened was, was that I wrote them to the tune of Harry Chapin's Six String Orchestra. Okay. Um, which is like, if you've never heard it, I recommend the Muppet version because it's so cute. Scooter's it's just so Scooter with like his little guitar mm-hmm. screwing Scooter's up and like. like... Daddy. <laughs> okay. Uh, I never thought about it like that. Um, but I wrote that song. I wrote Carbonite to the tune of that song. And then I passed the lyrics to Matricula and did not tell her. Um, <laughs> and so. You know, she ran with it and turned it into something completely different. And it was just pop rock song. And it was so fun. Yeah, it was like Runaway's Heart style, like 70s girl group pop rock song. And like, I was blown away because that's not at all. It's so different. (laughs) It's not at all what I wrote it to. It was amazing. Um, You finally told me. I was like, because like we were talking about writing songs. This is like one of our original three in that like two day period where we wrote a bunch of Star Wars songs um, and decided to put out a Star Wars uh, May the Fourth release. And yeah, uh, but uh, that's a. uh, I thought I I heard uh, Kirsten from the Humdingers does that a lot. She'll um, Mm -hmm. and I I kind of like it's a trick a lot of people use. But like I was like that was the first time I was like oh yeah that's a great idea. Like, um, if you're working with a songwriting partner that mostly is doing, like, the lyrics, it's, like, if they write it to the tune of something else. Because sometimes writing uh, writing parodies or writing kind of like fanfic, it's, like, it gives you, like, a starting mm-hmm. point to mm-hmm. kind of start developing. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, if you're writing it to the tune of something else, it gives you, like, that kind of framework to, like, put in, mm-hmm. like, kind of the rhythm and kind of what you want to go for. And then you pass it yeah. on to your the second person who has no idea. Yep. And they'll, and they'll go completely different places with it. And it's wonderful. And it, yeah. it becomes a game. It's just yeah. like you play a game. It's almost like playing telephone, but with songwriting. Mm-hmm. It's exactly and, a great analogy. It's exactly yeah, like that. Mm-hmm. It's yep. playing telephone with songwriting. And it's, it's so fun. And I kind of did it with a different song. That's also in the works. It's the Han Solo song. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. nowhere close to done. But and I have a melody, like an original melody for it, I think. But like I wrote it originally wrote it to the tune of uh of a Ben Fold song. Um, which nobody who knows me will be surprised. Um but uh but yeah, it's I and you don't have to do that all the time. Like like you can just sit down and like write lyrics. Like you don't need to have any kind of tune in mind. You can just have an idea for a song. Yeah, that's and just go. go with it. Yeah, yeah. I know. I I took we my English teacher in high school had us write a lot of poetry. Mm-hmm. That's just as various projects, and that's 
sort of where my head goes with it. And I come up with the melodies after most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, all of the stuff is like it, it's songwriting together over mm -hmm. distance. Like it's yeah. still really, it still feels really organic. Yeah. To me. Um, <clears throat> and I think that that's something that a lot of people get intimidated by. It's like, oh well, how do I do it? How do I do it? It's like just but also find a thing that works for you. Do doing it digitally also takes again takes pressure off because you're not sitting in a room together trying to spit out songs in like yeah. a span of time that you both have. It's and hey, I thought of this tape. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, I thought of this thing. <laughs> and then the other person will get back to you like an hour, two hours the next day, whatever. And you just work on it when you work on it. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like an, a be all end all thing. Because again, you're not wasting time in a studio or sitting in each other's houses with a finite period of time trying to live. You're probably just running down the clock on uh, your like, employer's work time. For lack of a bomb. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's... Yeah, coming up with ideas is a good way to clock watch. Don't. The office, I feel but... so seen. Stop it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's so much fun. And it's like, again, like I keep coming back to like, have fun. Starting a band yeah. online is fun. Um, yeah. I do want to mention, let's talk a little bit more about logistical stuff. Um, yeah. And then we'll kind of do some like final like tips and tricks and then we'll take mm -hmm. some audience questions if we have them otherwise we'll just kind of keep talking about our experiences yeah. and things that have worked and not worked but um i know that um so talking about like deadlines um like we don't have a lot of uh, for the crumbles it's like we don't have a lot of hard mm -hmm. deadlines we have a mm -hmm. few that are like goals like we wanted to put out a single on may the 4th um which was right. crazy because like we, we wrote the song on like a sunday and then like may the fourth was like friday or something right <laughs> and we but we did it we've we did had it. we've had a couple of experiences like that uh the i'll be ghost song was written in tw written and recorded in 24 hours Le yeah less than that and i think um the ghost so uh the ghost song actually i want to mention um talking about deadlines and working so usually we kind of we have like um sort of a loose spreadsheet with like goals and songs that we're working on or songs that we want to work on, like just like a shared Google spreadsheet, love, you know, Google, Google calendar, Google spreadsheets. Um, spreadsheets are wonderful. Yeah. To keep track of like, or um, we don't use it as much for this, but ideally like it would be like tracking like, okay, the guitar part on this song is done. And so that, so that we can both see where we are because mm -hmm. we both have jobs and lives and it's like, we try to get things done in a timely fashion, but you know, stuff happens, but that way everybody's kind of filled in. But, um, uh, for the, I think tonight at midnight on uh, one of the DCTV channels, there's a Filk showcase um, about songs that are um, themed to the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And um, I put one on and um, and I was like, because um, Amber's like, oh, you can do two. And I'm like, okay, awesome. Um, but I was like, wait, wait, what about, uh, like, Leah, do you want to do a crumble song? This is like nine o'clock the <laughs> night before it was due. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. And, like, it, and it was one of those things where we, um, it kind of was off the cuff. And um, I think that it was a good learning experience. Like one, we did it, it was awesome and it was fun. And we recorded a video of us singing it together, um, like double ended. Um, so like I sent her my part and I left like blank spaces where she would talk and we put it back together and it's really cute. But um, it was one of those things like to do that in a day, it was a lot. I'm glad that we did it and it was fun, but it gave me a sense of, um, I think it gave us a sense of what was too much. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was, it was funny because when you first brought it to me, the idea was to do a parody, right? It's not a whim. It yeah. was like it was like let's do a parody. And the more I thought about a parody, the more I was like, "Hey, do you just want me to like write lyrics? Because I I think I got something, and I think I wrote those lyrics in like under ten minutes." And it's they're they're fun, and they I had really fun, good. I had feelings about the end of the world. Apparently, so um, it's a good song it's about how we're all going to die. It is about how we're all going to die. Um, I had, like I said, I had feelings. Um, and so that got spat out. And then we just kind of spent the rest of the time, like, banging out, you know, a melody that for day, it. And, yeah, we did the melody. Yeah, and then, we did the melody. And then uh, that and then night. Recording it. And then we the recording the video. Because <laughs> we didn't know the song. So, like, the guitar mm -hmm. part, it's like, I, I have to, like, I don't know it well enough. So I still have to, like, look at the next song. So Lee yeah. had to sing the verses. Because I just couldn't keep up with the lyrics mm -hmm. and the guitar. And, and that's fine. I'm happy. Like, it was funny. It was yeah. just like, oh. And then yeah. to do it in a single take so that it would look like, and then to make it look like we're singing together. It's, together. It was really yeah. fun, and I'm glad that we did I, it. But uh, Chuck, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, that sounds like an amazing. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this, actually. <laughs> I can't, I, can't imagine, I can't imagine editing the, the video together like that. That's I'm not there yet. But 
<laughs> oh, um, uh, it's, like it's not a real bit until you suffer. <laughs> until you <Yeah>. suffer. <laughs> and it was an accidental thing, but I'm glad that we did it. And it wasn't. No, me too. It wasn't high stakes. Um, no. But it was like a okay. Maybe we need to like not do the 24 hour thing. Is maybe a little much mm. for us. I feel um, like yeah. I feel like I need if somebody wants me to do something in 24 hours. I want more prep. Like, I want you to tell me that it needs to be like a week, like yeah. a week before it's like, it's an event where you write a song in 24 hours. Like, and yeah. then I can just sort of prep for it. Well, I but didn't like, even think about having the crumbles do the, um, the end of the world thing. Cause it's like, Oh, it's hard. We can't really sing together. But then I got the idea. It's like, we could do the double in video thing. And that's, <laughs> then I was like, Lee, get in on this. But it's like the kind of thing, like, um, so I'm really involved in, uh, and Chuck is too, like a lot of the open yeah. silks and stuff. Yep. And, um, I always make sure, like, I'm, I'm inviting, like, you, Lee, but it's like, I know yeah. you have different patterns, but I want mm -hmm. everyone to have the same information, even if they don't yeah. all participate. Right. Um, oh, right, and oh. I, I always appreciate that, so, you um, know. The other thing I want to mention before we do some um, uh, talking about community um, and working with other people, the best thing you can do is make friends with other bands and make friends yep. with other artists. <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't know, Chuck, you've, uh, for example, Chuck is in every band. I don't know if you want to speak to that a little bit. Oh, I, 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 I that, he's been in my band, anyway. the Friends that, of Benefits. That, yeah, that's the joke anyway. I, I will, I will sit in and play with anybody who needs me. That's sort of the, I'm the utility player of the mid Atlantic filk circuit, is pretty much what it is. I've given, you know, I, I play bass with the Humdingers. I do my own thing. I've mm -hmm. backed up Madison a couple of times. I've got other folks talking to me. It's, you know, it, I play a bunch of instruments and I'm easy to work with. That's what you do. You are. And I've worked with Chuck um, and he is really easy to work with, um, both um, in the like sort of recorded stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I will not to brag on you too much, but like uh, Chuck is very flexible on the fly. Mm -hmm. um, it just just easy to work with. So and that's something, too, that I think is a good quality. Uh, for example, yeah. talking about setting expectations uh, yeah. like Lee and I, it turns out we have really similar kind of workflows yeah. mm -hmm. and um sort of thought processes about um like what's fun what's not fun you know what i mean and um that works really well but it's sort of like finding um like a D, &D gaming group yeah <laughs> like when, you when have it to clicks, find it clicks yeah, yeah definitely but you have to have kind of people with similar mm -hmm. expectations and play styles right <laughs> you can play with someone with a different play style but there takes mm -hmm. it takes out it takes some work yeah i mean for the yeah. collaboration online i can imagine i can see you 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 two i'm seeing you finish each other's sentences now and only that once it's wonderful <laughs> but <laughs> no but I, I can i can tell that you know and just hearing the stuff that you put together it's it's amazing stuff that you do in this all remotely i mean i mean i i largely just sit in and oh we want it to sound like this okay but <laughs> that's what a lot of what i do and that's that's something too though it's like uh so we uh one of the the tracks we just did like so like we, we're working together, but we're bringing in other people. Like uh, mm -hmm. we got our friend Joshua to do a um, like a Astro Max solo. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, my friend Kitty that I met from Twitch did drums for us. And so like we're still yeah. doing some of the session stuff mm -hmm. um, where we told them like, okay, we want it to sound like this and, and this. Yeah. But we had like a little group chat when the stuff was launching. Oh, it was yeah. all just really exciting, even though they weren't creatively involved in the same way we were. It's like mm -hmm. it's a team effort, right? Right. Like, yeah, and it's always really fun to include other people. I'm really excited because there's another Star Wars song that we're going to be working on where I'm just going to throw out. It's a it's a it's a drinking song. It is a Hutties drinking song. It is a okay. dirty Hutties drinking song. Your mom last night <laughs> in Hutties. Um, and it's a PG thirteen I'm stream, so we're gonna put going, parental advisory on it. <laughs> I'm I'm going to ask everybody I know, like to like record themselves singing the uh the chorus and so mm -hmm. i really just want like i want 50 people right i want awesome. 50 people i don't care how well you sing i don't care if you are tone deaf like my roommate is super tone deaf but i'm still gonna have her on the album she's great she's wonderful but she can't mm -hmm. sing i'm still gonna have her on the album because it's gonna oh, be yeah. funny yeah, we want like a chorus. I can... you want to yeah, you want a drunken chorus, chorus exactly. you know perfect so like, and and I think it's going to be really fun to like pull people in who maybe have never done anything like this before. Oh, that's so and, much fun! Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm stoked for it. I'm stoked to work with other people. And, and we had, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, we we had uh, my brother David do the baseline on uh, Tatooine Lullaby, uh, which also turned out really really nice. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and it's always, it's just really fun to sort of work with other people. And it was fun to have like my big brother, who's like usually like in charge of stuff, be like, is this good? And asking me. So, well, you know. The part on Tatooine Lullaby, when I was mixing it, I really like, um, like the guitar kind of drops out and it's just your voice kind of in a duet with the bass line. With the walking bass, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, that's just really sweet for like, like sibling It's a sibling stuff, you know? thing, like, yeah. Cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like, yeah. Try to do, but it's like the more people you can involve um, at different yep. times, like, when you're doing stuff online, just make it. Put it on SoundCloud. Put it on Bandcamp. Yep. Do parodies. put it on Tumblr. Do... Like... Oh, Tumblr loves this stuff. Oh, man. heck yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just reach out. I think that's the biggest thing is try and tap into a community, and I think that's yep. one of the real strengths of uh, Filk, uh, particularly yep. the kind of Southeast Dragon Con-y Filk stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that um, there are a lot of people, and we've done um, like Amber especially has done a lot of really good work to. Oh make the space more and more inclusive and safe and reach out to different kinds of performers like that, that don't know like miss it, that they're filk or not filk. Um, mm -hmm. But just trying to like tell people like the community of filk is the people that show up. Exactly. But I mean, that's how I've gotten, like I met Chuck through the humdingers uh, who actually mm -hmm. live uh, in my city. So it's like, I see them <laughs> socially as well. Um, mm -hmm. Not to name drop, but like, you know, <laughs> I'm cool. I've never been cool. The Huntingers <laughs> are really, really cool. They're really cool. Um, and like watching their kids grow up and be in the band. And it's yeah. like, you know, and now I'm interacting with um, the, the kids are old enough. It's like I can interact with them on a professional level as well. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, Chuck, I mean, your your kids are also musical. Yeah. Um, no, I, ha I had Mary, I had, I had Mary sing back, sing back up on a couple of the songs. And the first time I tried the first the first first run at Hello Friend on the record was way too high and way too rock and roll for me to do and so i said fine kid you sing it and it's up there on Bandcamp for nothing and it worked <laughs> yeah it's really cool uh looks like we had a question in the chat have any of us ever had projects disappear while working in the digital realm um from from sean mm -hmm. i have had um unfortunate um blue screens <laughs> Ooh. so i save frequently mm -hmm. yep. um, as far as disappear mostly it's um i've been lucky that like mostly it's just stuff i forget <laughs> mm -hmm. or gets pushed aside but um it is uh there is a lot of i i'm actually really um that's a good question i actually back up um my stuff to i save like a copy to dropbox i save a copy mm -hmm. to my hard drive and i save a copy to our disk station um, so actually like I have a lot of like redundancies and then a lot of times yeah. I'll back it up to my web space, um, like mm. my matricula.com web space. Um, That's what you got to do. And you still lose things sometimes. The yeah, worst, you'll lose the worst a take, bit, you'll lose yeah, a, the, yeah, yeah, the worst bit is you, you go, you, you go to click stop and you actually just click back and you lose the greatest take you've ever recorded. And no. It won't let you, yeah, won't let you bring yes. it back. Uh, yeah, that stuff yeah. does happen. Yeah, um, it does. Yeah. And you just have to. Or um, actually, on. what what happens more is I, I um, forget to hit record, <laughs> or you oh, forget to plug in the guitar. I've like, done that too. Yeah. Every, everybody, I think we've all done that. Yeah. Um, My absolute favorite is starting <laughs> starting takes and wondering why the sound is so echoey and realizing that the mic's not plugged in. Mm. Yeah. Why does it sound like? Oh, I Technic see. Technical I love getting, difficulties um, happen. That's the way it oh goes. Oh my god! I love yeah. getting. Sometimes I get um, the vocal lines uh, from Lee. And she's like, God, I'm going to get it this time. I swear mm -hmm. to God. And it's like, that's at the beginning of it. And then yep. it's like, she does a good take, but it's just really funny. Um, and like, then you're tempted to you gotta psych that yourself into the recording up. at the end. Too. Yeah. We you gotta do psych a yourself up. I kept, I have all that stuff. We should do like a blooper reel. <laughs> we um, could just me psyching myself up. Me with like, I'm going to do it. It's going to happen. Me, I'm mostly like, oh, God, I can't say what I say. Yeah. But it's yeah, like, you, uh, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't say mine over the PG-13 channel. Right. But that's you know what. But we're talking about making music and bands and stuff online. There are lots of other creative ways to collaborate. Yep. Oh um, yeah, like, like we've talked about like doing like goofy skit things mm -hmm. or um or like um, like little the the like bad bad beatbox stuff and like which I can't do. I, Lee had to do that. It's like <laughs> I can't. It's so bad. I'm so it's bad so at good. it. It sounds so good though, and like, uh, but like I said, um, free tools like Audacity or Reaper. Mm -hmm. uh, Reaper's sixty dollars for a um, a, an individual license, license for, but they yeah. have an unlimited free trial with full functionality. Mm -hmm. um, but Audacity is also free. But you can yep. do things like, um, like when you're doing a band online, you can't do a billion takes. Like you only have what you have mm -hmm. sometimes, and it's like someone might yep. not be able to do the take again. So like, don't be afraid. Like if there's a take that's 
really good except for like one or two off notes pitch correct it yep <laughs> it's fine just use, that's what like, it's usually for. it's yeah. really close it's not mm-hmm. about like auto-tuning it it's like don't be afraid to use these tools to help mm-hmm. like like if something if you need to nudge it up just a little bit that's fine or i adjust timing sometimes because yep. You don't have the luxury. Uh, you're doing it yourself. You don't have the luxury of getting as many takes as you want. Sometimes it's like mm-hmm. you've got to work with what you have, and it's the same kind of thing. And it sounds great because you're mm-hmm. making. To me, like getting into like mixing and getting better at it, um, it's like it's its own kind of instrument too. It's um, a completely different way of looking at the music. I learned so much. I, I, you know, and I still don't know what I'm doing, but I learned a lot. My whole record, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna just pick people's brains and do it myself, but. We'll... I actually have a um, I'll um, put this in I'll put a link to this in the mm-hmm. chat I actually have a like a teeny audio guide for um, okay. some of those uh, like what I, I really think the biggest thing about starting like for this thing that I really want to impart on people is you do not have to know how to do mm-hmm. audio mixing and audio engineering but when you do oh hey Icarus it's my bird <laughs> uh, when you do this kind of stuff um, online mm-hmm. you do kind of have to get more nitty gritty yeah. with some of the technical stuff. I know, Lee, uh, you, you've just started working with the microphone, so, like, learning about, like, the gain stuff and mic placement and pop mm-hmm. filters. Like, I don't know if you want to speak on that a little bit while I pull some stuff up. Oddly, like, it, it's a lot of trial and error. Like, I will, you know, you you just have to figure out what sounds best, mm-hmm. you know, in the room that you're in with the tools that you have. Yeah. Um, and it kind of changes every time you do it. Like, you just have to find that placement and and figure out what works best. Sometimes, most times, I don't use the pop filter um, because it doesn't make like the biggest difference in the world for me. Um, sometimes I'll you're really wailing. It's like <laughs> back, it's not... <laughs> that that note was probably where you got the "I'm gonna get it this time" recordings from the most. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, um, you know, it, it's it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of yeah. You know, figuring out what's gonna what's gonna work for what song mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with yeah, don't the shape. Yeah, don't be afraid. Yeah, don't, don't, yeah, just, don't be afraid. Just, just jump in. That's Keep messing with do. it. It's all yeah. about messing with it. Yeah. And and it also depends on if you're if you're recording voice. It mm-hmm. also depends on what shape your voice is in in on that day. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, I mean, and don't, yeah, your inexperience can sometimes be a benefit. You know, you may not, you, you know, if you have too much training, you know, you never move that slider over there, but you do, and you get a great sound. And then right. somebody says, how do you do that? And like, oh, I would, you know, it's, you talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. And yeah, yeah just, yeah, it's okay to you experiment. got the tools, use them. I mean, you can fix it later. If it I mean, work. and I'm, I'm really grateful for like my sort of plug and play setup. Mm-hmm. Right. Because like I know there's a lot of people who take a lot of time to like really set up their recording apparatus, you know, <laughs> and it, it 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 takes them forever because they're trying to get it like real perfect. And I'm just like, all right, let's where does the mic go? Am I plugged in? Is Audacity open? Where are my lyrics? You know, like I'm I'm really like, grateful for the like super simple plug and play. I don't at this point in what I'm doing, I don't know that I need anything more complicated than that yeah Yeah, so i would rather have the songs exist um than have perfect equipment and you can always like with time you can fix stuff like i said uh the first track that we did for crumbles we recorded on like an office business talk headset Mm -hmm. mic yep garbage but it like we made it sound good (laughs) like we found a sound to work with that yeah Yeah. don't don't use the you know yeah don't use that as, as an excuse if you've got singing you to your to. phone yeah. Sing, yeah yeah i mean like, if, to get get the stuff together you can always record it again later get the idea yeah. oh down. do a remix do like yep. an ep version an album version an acoustic <laughs> version like yeah i love i'm fine having different versions oh like, yeah i want to go back and re-record my first ep because i am so much my sound is so different now and mm-hmm. i want to make it into a whole up uh, but you know it's a whole thing it's like and, oh, yeah. yeah put out different versions whatever it's fun have fun mm-hmm. with it make the thing with your friends that makes you happy and and that's the thing, and and the thing that Matricula and I are very much on the same page about. If it's not fun, don't do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, if it's just something that stresses you out, why are you going to do it? Yeah. So like, but if you know that it's something that you will enjoy and that you mm-hmm. will, and that other people will enjoy, like, there's no reason not to do it. Like, just mm-hmm. jump in. Like, really. Yeah. 
and I want to mention if you come out with something that you're happy with, like you don't have to like do this, but like it's not incredibly cost prohibitive to put your songs on Spotify if you're happy yeah. with the um it's free to put stuff on Bandcamp. They take a cut when you yeah. sell. Um you uh to put like a single on Spotify with C D baby, which is what I use. Um yeah. some people use a it depends on how much music you put out. Like that's a whole conversation what kind of distributor that's to an use. Entirely different thing, yeah. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like fifteen bucks or something. Um yeah. plus like uh, or maybe and then you have to like do the barcode stuff. So it's like Oh, yeah, it's like, it's like 40, less 40 than thirty bucks, bucks yeah, for 40 a bucks single. To get an album up. Yeah. yeah, forty. Yeah. yeah, forty or fifty for an album. Um, so if you want, just go ahead and put it up. If it's like that kind of thing, yeah. and like we've been lucky that like um, we were really excited that like Carbonite has broken even. Distribution. <laughs> 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 yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. you. <laughs> but, um, the, but those are things that you can do. Like that stuff is not cost prohibitive. I also want to mention briefly um, that if you, we mostly do. I think all three of us mostly do original music, but. Mm -hmm. um, you can license covers. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. I use um, so like on uh, I have one cover on Spotify that's like "Come Little Children" from um, Hocus Pocus, and I, I've licensed that, so I pay royalties on it. But it's an excellent billboard for the rest of my music at yep. Halloween because everyone wants mm -hmm. to they listen to that song. But like you can do covers like um, they're different prices for different kinds of things, but it's also not cost mm -hmm. prohibitive. Yeah. Um, it's like you know twenty or thirty for a license, and then like depending on the song, and then you pay royalties on that when. Um, when you have streams and stuff and uh cd baby now will um and other distributors will handle that for you i've done it by hand with mm -hmm. harry fox um for one of mine but just look up song licensing mechanical mm -hmm. license is what you want if you want to record okay. covers with friends like official ones but you can always do covers and put them on youtube mm -hmm. you know like you don't have to like officially release them like um yeah. i want to mention like so lee and i did a thing where we sang together but we're not really together. So she sang, I sang my half and I sent that to her with the blank spaces where then she filled in where she was. But like mm -hmm. you could do stuff like that and put it on YouTube and sing mm -hmm. harmony to each other, sing yep. multiple guitar parts. Like, um, so those are all things that you can just do for fun. If you just want to play yeah. with your friends, it's not quite yeah. the same as playing in the same room, but listening to it after yeah. the fact, it's really cool. So. Yep. It's all the, the, the tools are there. And for the most part, they're free to do the basics. A lot of stuff is free. Yep. Mm-hmm. Or you already have it, you know, like yeah. you've already paid for a phone. You've already got a. Yep. Yeah. You know. But um, yeah. Um, so do, or do we have any other uh, audience questions? Otherwise, we might just talk a little bit more about um, projects that we want to do or are looking forward to or things that have been just fun about collaborating. So uh, kind of do like a roundup of final thoughts and uh, see if there are any other questions. Uh, so does anybody have any uh, like if you enjoyed <laughs> working? <laughs> have there been things that are. Um, harder let's maybe like what's been like kind of a challenge i think that scheduling can sometimes be a challenge just because you know like you said everybody's got life a life and you're not always gonna sync up and you try your best but there are times when you know occasionally it's just like uh oh, it's not gonna work today uh we gotta put it off uh give me an hour That's, like and yep yeah you know, and, and it happens, and it, mm -hmm. but as long as you're patient with it, totally yeah. fine. And if um, you enjoy it, you end up making the time. So that's... Yeah, exactly. Um, I think while we give some other final thoughts, um, if uh, um, Amber has a link to, uh, just to, to mention, we all are musicians. Mm -hmm. um, these are our projects. Um, I am uh, matricula.com for my solo stuff. And then Salacious mm -hmm. Crumbles, The Salacious Crumbles has its own Yay. website. And then... Um, mm -hmm. Lee and Chuck, if you want to talk about your uh, uh, okay. your links, Lee, it's uh, got a link to your uh, yeah. fanzine and then Chuck's website. So. Yeah, okay. so the, the fa thanks. The, the fanzine is a Batman coloring book fanzine that we're doing for charity. Uh, I helped with the editing process. I have a story that's in there. Um, it turned out really, really fun. If you are a Batman fan, I definitely encourage you to take a look. Mm -hmm. uh, there, it, it, The Profits are going to a couple of charities, one being the NAACP uh, Education and uh, yeah Fund, and um, I think I believe a, a different education fund as well. Um, so definitely, if you're a Batman fan or if you're just an art fan, like check it out. It's a lot of fun and it's really cute. Uh, doesn't it, if it sells uh, enough pre-orders, doesn't everyone get a special <laughs> Lee Tyberg track? It it does have a Salacious Crumbles mm -hmm. track. Uh, a, a Batman, a, a sidekick themed track, actually, uh, that uh, Madison was heavily involved in. <laughs> she did an amazing job uh, on the production. On. <laughs> yes. And uh, 
yeah, I believe if I can't remember if it's the the sixty copy or the one hundred copy, but it is one of the one of the prizes if we get to a specific amount of copies mm -hmm. sold. And uh, Chuck, mm -hmm. uh, you have a website as well. Yep. Yeah, that uh, Chuck Dash Parker dot net. That I've had that going in some form since yeah. 2002 maybe that's how far the archives go back it's mostly me screaming at the world i've had a blog since before there was the word for it but i also track my current projects on there i post pictures of my cats i you know when i have gigs they're listed there's a section there for it, and i have a bunch of stuff that i've made over the years there too I do want to mention if you go to uh, my website matricula.com uh the logos and stuff were made by uh mm -hmm. I hired Amber, uh, our track director, uh, and she also, just to plug her, she also does excellent uh, creative work uh, as far as like collaborating on um, branding yeah, yeah, and like how things look. And it just makes it, you know how like sometimes like it doesn't matter if you have like really cute decorations, but you really like them because they're really cute. It's like, <laughs> there's something to like that feeling of it. So oh, yeah. uh, we had one more question and then I think we'll wrap. Um, um, uh, Christopher Knight Saber Incident, when things are actually normal again, what are your plans? Like live shows? Do we want to record together? Do we want to play together? Like, I know that when cons happen again, I would love to, like, I played with Chuck at cons. Lee, I would love to have you come play at cons. I would, I would love to come to cons. Yeah. Like, I love a good convention, and uh, I've only ever been to Dragon Con once, mm -hmm. um, and would love to hop back in in a, in a filk capacity. That would be a lot uh, of fun. <laughs> there are a lot of them. So so many of us in the community, Con Carolinas, Mars Con, all those folks, mm -hmm. lots of places for that. And yeah, I mean, what are we? What are our plans? I mean, I'm hoping to get some gigs again. I, in in the real world, I do play in bars now and then. I host a monthly open mic in one of the breweries here in town. We have like 50 of them now. But it's yeah, I, once a month, I I host we. We're just developing a community, and then COVID happened, so I haven't played in live in front of people since March. But yeah. it's a lot of fun. Yeah, for me, it's like I really want to start. Um, I've actually been doing. I like playing online, so I actually have mm -hmm. diagnosed with narcolepsy. Um, so I do have a hard time at cons because uh, I just get mm -hmm. so white. Um, but I've enjoyed playing online. I want to keep um, expanding uh, my online presence. I stream live on Twitch concerts and stuff. Um, but I've really, really enjoyed getting more into recording mm -hmm. um so i just uh i've really enjoyed working with lee for that and also kind of just expanding my own guitar playing but i would love to start playing um like more cover gigs uh and stuff on stage like i feel like i'm a competent enough um, rhythm guitarist now it's like i can mm -hmm. i can back people like as far as like session stuff um so i would like to get back on uh back on a stage back in the clown makeup yeah um, there you go so uh, so it's about time to wrap. So um, I think, um, does anybody, I know some of us are appearing at some different uh, panels uh, throughout the weekend at 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Um, I'll be doing my solo set. I will be in Yay. clown makeup. Yay! Um, and then I'm also on a panel at 1 p.m. tomorrow with Mark Gunn about um, lyrics that we would wish we'd rewritten or lyrics we wanted to write. Um, so, And then uh, Chuck, uh, where will you be? Are you appearing on other stuff uh, this week? I I think this is about it unless I pop into the open filk tonight if I stay up long enough. Yeah, um, the again, open filks are tonight um, and tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Yep. And it's, uh, I, I, I love them though. I kind of want to watch Mikey play too. But Yeah. <laughs> well, the nice thing about um, yep. the stuff with Facebook is that if you miss mm -hmm. something, you can go yeah. back and watch the uh, the replay. So, mm -hmm. uh, and Lee, uh, what? Oh, oh that's you... right. Oh, oh, I, oh, I know. Oh, yes. I noticed the Amber posted in there. Yeah, I forgot. To, oh, I'm on the sure. fresh, the fresh filk two by tens tomorrow on Sunday. I Yay. recorded a set a while back. A couple of I'll play a couple of songs with a bunch of other great people. Yay. Uh, yeah, Yay. The Fresh Folk um, are kind yeah. of like little showcases, so it's a two yeah. by ten, so either two songs or ten minutes. Um, but uh, Lee, what do you have coming up? Uh, I will likely probably try to pop into some of the Filk circles, but that's about it for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think uh, Amber will pop back on, and y'all, thank you so much for uh, talking mm -hmm. with us about um, starting a band online. Go do it. Don't let uh, technology yep. stop it. you. <laughs>